So, you got yourself a little family and you're looking for a not so little family car to move them around in. Well, chances are you've probably considered a Nissan Qashqai because over the 13 years this thing has been in existence, it's proven itself to be the absolute daddy or mummy when it comes to transporting daddies and mummies. This is the brand new third generation model and Nissan reckons it has better looks, better space and better technology than ever before. But is it better than the plethora of rivals snapping at its wheels? Today, find out. Visually, it's very much recognizable as a Qashqai, but with some notable tweaks. It has a bigger V-Motion grille finished in chrome with slim full LED headlamps. Along the side, there's a single crease or fast line that apparently conveys a sense of dynamism. Fair enough, plus new 20-inch diamond cut alloy wheels just begging to be curbed and a funky floating roof design. So it looks good and that's important, but here's an even more important question. How easy is it to throw your family in the car? The answer, extremely easy. These doors open to almost 90 degrees, 85 degrees to be specific, which is I think the widest I've ever seen. And it makes it very simple to throw a car seat in there, throw a child in there and then get them on their way in no time at all. Crucially, it also makes it super simple for your child to fling the door open with reckless abandon into someone else's paintwork or to the walls of your driveway. This sound of thought of everything. Let me show you the rear space. It's actually pretty good. The Qashqai is based on a new platform, which has allowed them to make it bigger than before. It's longer, wider, and taller. Crucially, it also has a longer wheelbase. The distance between the front and rear wheels is wider, which means you now have 28 millimeters more legroom. This front seat is adjusted for me. I'm five foot 11 and look at the amount of legroom I've got. That is more than decent. Headroom isn't amazing though. I've only got about that much room for my head and that's perhaps partly down to the fact that it comes with this panoramic glass roof, but not ideal if you're a taller traveler. Things get a little bit worse in the center seat as well. There's a slight bit of a transmission tunnel, but that's not too bad. But my head is actually just about touching the ceiling, which is not ideal. But if you've got a child who's five foot 11, then maybe you need to stop feeding them. Apart from that, you've got two USB points, type C and type A, as well as for the first time ever in the Qashqai, unbelievably, rear ventilation. The previous models didn't come with rear ventilation. Those poor children. If there's one thing I'd complain about though, it's the fact that this car only has two Isofix points at the rear. Some vehicles come with a third Isofix point at the front. And I'd also like to complain about the lack of a seven seater option. Nissan used to make a Qashqai plus two, but that's been completely condemned. And nowadays you only get five seats, but on the whole, pretty decent cabin. It has a pretty decent boot too, electrically operated for the first time in a Qashqai, with a cargo floor that's been lowered by 20 millimeters for more space. In total, it's 50 liters bigger than before with a generous 504 liters, has side storage compartments, a luggage board divider that keeps dirty items away from clean ones, and easy latches to drop the rear seats for those inevitable trips to you know where. So there's plenty of space in the new Qashqai for your kids and your stuff. How about space for mum and dad? Well, actually, it's pretty decent. The interior is bigger, so you now get 28 millimeters more shoulder room, 10 millimeters more hip room, and also 15 millimeters more knee room. So it feels a bit more, a bit more spacious than before. I'm not convinced by the headroom up here still though. Look at that. I've lowered the seat as low as it will go, and I've still only got about three inches to play with. Like I said, I'm 5'11", so if you're what, six foot four, your head is gonna be touching the ceiling. Not ideal. As for the rest of the cabin, the visibility out of the windscreen is very good. The A pillars are nice and thin, so it's easy to see what's going on out the front of you. And actually, the C pillars around the back, that's the bit that joins the back to the side of the car, have a little window to help you see what's going on out the sides. And that actually helps make kids feel a little bit less claustrophobic as well. And I do like what they've done with the rest of the cabin. It looks quite contemporary. You've got some fake leather going on up here on the dashboard, some fake Japanese inspired wood, white stitching, white ambient lighting, and also some fake Japanese wood going on down here on the center console. Unfortunately, some of the materials are less impressive, particularly down here by these cup holders where you get probably the cheapest grade of plastic you'll find in any automobile. But yeah, the less said about that, the better. 
Ease of use is always going to be very important in cars like the Qashqai and I think Nissan have got it right. This heating, ventilation and climate control system down here might look like an old 80s amplifier but it's very, very simple to use. Huge icons, big chunky buttons, no nonsense. So many manufacturers are opting for HVAC controls which are buried inside touchscreens and they're tricky to use but in this, no bother. The gadgets in the new Qashqai have been improved as well. You now get, in the top models, Wi-Fi for up to seven different gadgets. So one for each of the passengers, plus two spares, bizarrely. You also get a new 12 inch driver display in front of you. It's not as high resolution or as fancy as some more premium models, but it looks great and does the job. And you get a new nine inch infotainment system. It's pretty simple to work out what this thing does and it's fairly responsive as well. Not quite as responsive as it might be on a mobile phone, for example, but on the whole, I think they've done a pretty sterling job with all of the gadgets in this car. Except one, the new Qashqai actually has massaging seats, but they're not very good. They just sort of prod you feebly in different parts of the backrest. It's a bit like being kicked in the back by your children on the way to school, except here you have to pay for the privilege. I do have to give credit where it's due though. This car has a really good, really big head up display. So there are graphics overlaid on the windscreen, which is showing me my speed, the speed limit, navigation instructions, media playback, and it's all there. It fills the entire lane. It's massive. It feels like it's something that you should be seeing on a much more premium product. Well done, Nissan. In terms of engines, Nissan has gotten rid of all its diesels for the Qashqai. You'll have a choice of 1.3 litre mild hybrids with either 140 or 158 horsepower, manual or CVT automatic, and either two or four wheel drive. This is the 1.3 litre mild hybrid with 158 horsepower, and it's an absolute lunatic. Actually, I'm, I'm exaggerating, it's not a lunatic at all, but it's not as weak as you might imagine. You put your foot down and get to about three and a half thousand RPM and it pulls. And the engine feels nice and smooth. It's not as slow as you might expect from an engine this small. Fuel economy wasn't so impressive though. I averaged between 20 and 25 miles per gallon, which is not that great in a family crossover. However, later Nissan will offer a new e-power engine fueled by petrol, but driven by batteries. The ride comfort is surprisingly nice as well. It rides over imperfections in the road surprisingly well, better than some premium cars. The car I drove just before jumping into this was a Mercedes GLE with air suspension. And this, this rides better, believe me. It's quiet as well. They've done a lot of work to focus on reducing the noise, vibration and harshness in the previous Qashqai by applying sound deadening material where it really counts. And actually, this is a comfortable, quiet car to cruise in. Apart from, occasionally you might crunch your gears. This gear stick is not blessed with the smoothest action in the world and there are times when you might get confused between third and first. Maybe stick with the automatic if you're not confident with a manual. Or if you don't want to drive at all, you can use the Nissan Pro Pilot system. This works a lot like Tesla's Autopilot. In other words, it'll cruise around at a set speed, taking speed limits into account, steer around corners and brake all the way down to a standstill before resuming again, as long as you're resting your hands on the wheel. And it works pretty well for the most part. On the whole, I think Nissan have done a pretty sterling job with the new Qashqai. They've taken a very solid, very popular car and improved it in the areas where it matters the most. It is a very stylish, very desirable car that I think will fit into a lot of people's family lives quite seamlessly. Okay, maybe they could do with some improvements, especially where headroom is concerned. Taller people might not love this, but as crossovers go, the cash guy is still the daddy and the mummy. Oh, yeah.